Some of you watching this right now, I don't know who you are, but you're feeling the stretch and I need you to know you're not going to snap. You feel like you're going to snap. You feel like you cannot trust God. And so you want to just let it go. But the truth is snapping back is going to hurt you a whole lot more than embracing the stretch of moving forward. There's always more in us. We're looking at the book of Isaiah, chapter 54. Right here in Isaiah 54, it says, Sing, O barren one, who did not bear Break forth into singing and cry aloud, you who have not been in labor. For the children of the desolate one will be more than the children of her who is married, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent. I love that. And let the curtains of your habitations be stretched out. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes for you will spread abroad to the right and to the left and your offspring will possess the nations and will people the desolate cities. It goes on. I love this part. Fear not for you will not be ashamed. Do not be confounded for you will not be disgraced. You will forget the shame of your youth and the reproach of your widowhood. You will remember no more for your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name and the Holy One of Israel is your redeemer. The God of the whole earth he is called. We could just keep reading. I love Isaiah 54 sandwich right there between the atoning work of Jesus and this great end time revival in Isaiah 55 is this chapter about the church. And at a time of Babylonian captivity, when it did not look like in any way the children of Israel were flourishing. It was one of the darkest hours in Israel's history. The temple had been burnt to the ground, had been destroyed. It didn't look like there was any hope or any future. In the midst of all of that, God said, guess what? It's expansion time. And I love that because you could take that for a word for you in your heart right now. Sometimes we look around us and it seems like everything's fallen apart. Our relationships, our finances, perhaps even our health and things going on around us. And we think, God, what can you do? And God says, in the midst of all of that, this is growth time. This is expansion time. This is a time to enlarge. This is a time to stretch. I loved it because last week we looked at what it was to enlarge, to magnify, to make God bigger than your problems, to make God bigger than your past, to make God bigger than your circumstances. It is a discipline. It's not easy to enlarge. That's why most people like to just live very small and we keep our eyes focused on ourselves we keep looking at ourselves, we keep looking at the past, we keep looking at the world around us and God says, no, 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 I need you to lift up your gaze. I need you to magnify me, make me bigger than anything else going on in your life. And so you can step into the purpose of God. And then I love the second word right here. We're looking at the five words. It says to stretch. Now to stretch is to be made or capable of being made longer or wider without tearing or breaking. Now here is the truth that you've got to be willing to stretch for increase. And, and stretching can be quite painful. But the gap between where you are and where God wants to take you, you're going to have to stretch to get there. Most of us, we want God to catapult us into our destiny. But God says, no, no, I need you to stretch. My promises are just out of reach, but you're going to have to stretch to get them. Now, you might have seen, you know, at the gym, I love to go to, to the gym and I've discovered these stretch bands, which are absolutely awesome. Now you look at this and you go, wow. And I'm going to call my husband in to, to help me right now. And I know many of you have not met Nick. So Nick, come up here. And this is, I always love to call him my most ravishing piece of masculine flesh <laughs> on planet Earth. Can, I think this could be your first time saying hello to all yep. the TVN audience. Okay. Hello. This is my man of nearly 21 years. So over here, if you grab this, now we just without, we won't put any tension in it. It's, this is how long this seems. But the truth is, there's more in it. And if we just pull, you could see if you hold one, that's a lot, lot longer when we started. So we'll start at a normal length. If you could just hold it at the end there. That's right. And now just even pull it there. Look how much more is in it. I want you to know that you're starting here watching this today. But I need you to know that God says, uh, uh, there's all this. There's all this still in you. Now, the fact is, it hurts to go like this. I go to the gym a lot and I don't stretch very much. I remember a few years ago, thanks, Nick. A few years ago, I went uh, skiing for one of the very first times in my life. And I, I wasn't very good at skiing. I didn't really start skiing until I was in my 40s. And it was during the time of the Vancouver Olympic Games. Now, what was really funny about that was... I would watch the Olympic Games during the night 
And then the next morning, because we had gone with five other American families up to Colorado to ski, the next morning, I would feel a moral obligation to represent Australia <laughs> um, when I... And, and the fact that I couldn't ski was incidental. That really didn't matter. But I was going to represent Australia. And so I would get off the ski lift. And remember, I was on the flat green slope because I was a beginner. Well, this one day, uh, all the boys had gone on this, like, double black diamond suicide run kind of... Um, <laughs> You know, I, I can't even understand how any human being can actually stay upright down those cliffs. But I was on my flat green slope and I'd convinced my husband, Nick, to come with me. And so we were skiing away and I said to him, I'm thinking this is awesome, I said, hey, babe, if you were with all of the boys right now, you would not be having a better time than you're having with me in this moment, would you? Now, of course, anyone watching this broadcast, if you're married and you want to stay married, um, you would know that if your wife ever asked you a loaded question like that, if you were looking for any action that night, you would, of course, say, <laughs> of course, your right answer would be, babe, the pinnacle of my skiing life is on this flat slope with you. That's what you would actually say. <laughs> but my husband, being a man of incredible integrity, turns around and he says, you know, babe, if I was with the guys right now, I'd probably be having a whole lot more fun. Well, I need to tell you, that's like putting a red rag in front of a bull. And so I looked back at him and I just went, famous last words, well, honey, eat my snow. And with that, I pointed my skis straight downhill and I looked straight down and about 20 seconds later, I knew that I was in massive trouble on my second somersault that was not intentional, when upside down, I heard the loudest pop, pop, pop you have ever heard. And I snapped my ACL, I tore my MCL, I tore my meniscus and I fractured my knee. I did it all. So in that moment, um, I couldn't get back up, I couldn't move. And Nick had to call the ski patrol. You know, they come, they take you, they put you in that little coffin where you assume death posture. And then <laughs> they take you down the mountain and everyone, everyone is pointing, who is that nerd? Who is that nerd? And it was, in, no doubt, it was me. And then, you know, you've got to understand, I come from a, a Greek family and Greeks are essentially fatalists. It does not matter how bad life is, it can always get worse. And so my mother would always say negative things to me like, Christina, you can't go skiing, you're going to break a leg. Christina, you can't go skiing because, you know, you're going to die. You know, it would be really life uplifting words like that. Well, um, she would always say to me every day before I left the house when I was growing up, Christina, are you wearing good clean underwear? To which I would always say, Mum, why? She would say, Christina, because if you end up in an accident and you are in the back of an ambulance, you must be wearing good underwear. <laughs> to which I would always say to my mother, Mum, if I am going to have the kind of accident where I end up in the back of an ambulance, the last thing I will care about is the condition of my underwear. <laughs> well, all I want to say to you all today is as the ski patrol was lifting me up into that ambulance, I have just lived long enough yet again to utter the words, my mother was right. <laughs> and so anyway, when all this happens, I had to have a hamstring graft. I had to have full surgery, had a hamstring graft. And the physical therapist in Sydney came over to me and said to me, once my surgery was finished, she said, Christine, he said, most people, he said, you've had serious surgery, but technically your right knee is now much stronger than your left knee. But the point is that most people don't actually fully recover from the surgery that you've had. And you see that with a lot of professional athletes. They're gone and maybe some people will walk with a limp for the rest of their life. Not that they need to. But he said, your accident happened in a split second. Mm. It was painful, but it was only painful for that moment. He said, the truth is, the recovery process is going to take several months. And he said, this kind of recovery from this kind of injury is extremely painful, much more painful than the injury ever was. And he said this to me. He said, Christine, you can either recover quickly or slowly, completely or partially. It's entirely up to you. The degree to which you embrace the pain of recovery mm. is the degree to which you will recover. Mm. And what we find is many of us, we don't want to stretch to embrace the pain. Mm. 
to recover from our past or our offences or the hurt or the fear or the doubt or the negativity because it takes a huge stretch to grow. Now, I come from a background of abuse and many people go, well, Christine, why are you stepping into your destiny and other people are not? It's not that I'm more gifted. It's not that I'm more talented. It's not that God favours me anymore. It's just that as difficult as it has been, and hear me, it has been difficult, but as difficult as it has been, I have been willing to embrace the pain of recovery, willing to say, I will go through what I need to go through in order to recover so that I can be healed. Just like in that injury, I think a lot of us many times, we just think that God is going to snap us whole, but he's not going to snap us whole. In fact, he's going to stretch us whole. That's the whole, you're going to have to stretch beyond anything that you're comfortable with in any sphere of life. When I started the A21 campaign, I did not know anything about human trafficking. I did not know how trafficking rings worked. I didn't know about how you prosecute traffickers. I didn't know where we were going to rescue women and children from. I didn't even know where to begin. So God said, okay, we're going to start a stretch. We're going to go here. From here to here and slowly I got myself educated. Slowly I met more people. He opened door after door. When I started Propel Women, it was the same thing. I had to stretch way out of my comfort zone. I mean, it was not anything I ever thought that I was going to do. It wasn't anything I ever thought I wanted to do. But God said, let's just stretch your capacity. And just when you think you can fit nothing more in, mm -hmm. God goes, oh no, there's more of a, and there always is, it's just, you notice as it gets, ah, it hurts more. For me to even pull this more, it actually hurts more. And so the degree to which you're willing to embrace that, some of you watching this right now, I don't know who you are, but you're feeling the stretch and I need you to know you're not gonna snap. You feel like you're going to snap. You feel like you cannot trust God. And so you want to just let it go. But the truth is snapping back is gonna hurt you a whole lot more than embracing the stretch of moving forward. There's always more in us. Friends, with your faithful partnership, TBN is reaching over 175 nations. That's why for your gift of support, any amount this month, we are excited to offer you Michael W. Smith's heartwarming book, The Way of the Father. Take a moment to visit tbn.org slash the father. Thank you.